started. Thank you to Kathy Fox. So good morning, everyone. I'm Councillor Philip Davis. I'll be chairing this hearing of Subcommittee A of the Licensing and Public Protection Committee of Birmingham City Council. Uh, if everybody could mute your microphones for the moment so we can improve the sound quality while I talk about procedure. And if you would also turn off your cameras with the exception committee members, unless you're the person speaking, because this helps us uh, deal with any uh, bandwidth issues. Committee members will normally have their cameras switched on throughout the hearing. Um, and again, if you can make sure you're in a place where you won't be distracted by mobile phones or other issues, then that will assist the whole process. It's very important for what I have for obvious reasons that those attending the meeting and making representations are able to hear me and members of my subcommittee and officers. Any distractions brought to my attention could result in the meeting being suspended temporarily or to another date and time under the regulations for these type of meetings. This is a public meeting and is therefore being live streamed on the City Council's website so that the general public can view it. And uh, the, for, for, the formal agenda is as follows. Item one, notice of recording webcast. I advise the meeting to note that this meeting will be webcast for live or subsequent broadcast by the Council's meeting YouTube site. And members of the press and public may record and take photographs except where there are confidential or exempt items. Two declarations of interest. Members are reminded they must declare all relevant pecuniary and non pecuniary interests arising from any business to be discussed at this meeting. If a disclosure of pecuniary interest is declared, a member must not speak or take part in that agenda item. Any declarations will be recorded in the minutes of the meeting. Thirdly, um, apologies and notification of many members. No apologies have been submitted. There are no substitutions. Um, Next item is to confirm and sign the minutes of the meeting held on the 1st of August 2022 to note the public part of the minutes of the meeting held on the 8th of August 2022 to confirm and sign the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of August 2022. Uh, so uh, we can we agree to do that please? Thank you very much. So on to the main business. Can I welcome you to this hearing for an application for review in the respect of the license for Select Express 1164 to 1166 Warwick Road, Acox Green, Birmingham B27 6BS. As I said, my name is Councillor Philip Davis. I'm chairing this meeting of the Licensing Subcommittee A. With me are other members of the subcommittee, Councillor Mary Locke and Councillor Simon Morrell. Also present in this meeting are the following officers the Licensing Officer, Mr. David Kennedy, the Committee Manager, Ms. Katie, Ms. Katie Townsend, the Committee Lawyer, Ms. Joanne Swamp. And uh, if I could now move to the parties attending today, um, if you would just indicate your presence. Uh, Mr. Martin Williams from Trading Standards. That's correct, Chair, yeah, I'm present. Thank you. Mr. Mark Swallow from Westminster's Police. Yes, Chair, uh, present, thank you. Thank you very much. And Ms. Sarah Lavender from Licensing Enforcement. Yes, Chair, I'm present, thank you. Okay. And. Uh, next, the license holder and their representative. So, Mr. Naga Rajesh, the agent for the license holder. Mr. Rajesh? Um, yes, Chair, yeah, I'm present. Okay. And as we've seen, um, Mr. Harry Karan is also attending. Uh, his wife is the, uh, uh, is the license holder. Yes, I am present. Okay, okay thank you very much. Okay. Um, now, could I ask? Any of the persons making representations uh, at this stage, uh, whether they wish to withdraw those representations. I'll, I'll take silence as that you don't. OK, no one wishes to withdraw. I assume all parties have read and understood the Licensing Committee's procedural rules, which we sent out with the notice of today's hearing. Given the nature of today's proceedings, I may at my discretion amend the procedural rules to reflect the fact that this meeting is taking place online. But I want to assure all parties that any such amendments will not impact on the party's right to a fair hearing. We use the chat function, which I think everybody's familiar with these days, as a backup um, if there's any communications issues. And uh, we also record our attendance on the chat. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is go to the chat function, please, and just put your name into the chat function, which I'm doing now. Uh, let's wait for it to come up. Little bit of a delay, and there we are. That helps us with our record keeping. Oops. 
Now make sure I spell it correctly. So if we can all put that in currently. And there we are. Okay. So thank you very much for that. Um, I don't think anybody's dialed in on an audio telephone, so we don't have that com complication. Uh, with the exception of subcommittee members, please keep your cameras off unless you're the person speaking. If there are problems with the bandwidth, which cause difficulties with sound, I may at my discretion ask everyone to turn their cameras off so that the meeting can proceed with everyone able to hear and be heard. Um, another procedural issue now. Um, does anyone have any preliminary points? Uh, as I say, these are usually about pr process. Um, do any of the it's people making representations or if I go to you, Mr. Um, Rajesh, do you have any preliminary points about process? Um, no, Chair. No. And again, I'll ask all the other parties making representations. Does anybody else have a point about pro procedure they want to raise? I take silence as no. No. OK, thank you very much for that. So. Um, Again, on the procedure today, firstly, we'll be asking the licensing officer, David Kennedy, to present the report. Then the applicant uh, will be asked to present their case. Um, we're keeping, um, it's a review really, this is terminology we use in some meetings, but um, essentially those applying for review will be asked to make their case. Uh, and we ask the representations to be kept to uh, 20 minutes per, uh, per uh, speaker. Um, then the license holder uh, or the representative, Mr. Rajesh, obviously, will be invited to make their case. And again, you have 20 minutes to do that, Mr. Rajesh. And again, if all parties can speak slowly and clearly, um, because the officers are taking notes by hand for the minutes, and the meeting's also being remote stored. And uh, again, if you can just follow the procedure of muting your microphone if someone else is speaking, you can always use the chat function as a backup. Please note that members of the subcommittee will be able to ask questions at any stage, but we'll try to do so at the conclusion of each presentation, each presentation. Cross-examination by the applicants and those making representations will not be permitted unless the members consider it appropriate. When questions are raised by members of the subcommittee or by those present, they must signify, um, sorry, this is, this is a slightly um, arcane thing in here. It's just about the use of the chat again. You can indicate to me verbally uh, otherwise, or, but if you have any problems communicating, use the chat as back. Um, if at any point you can't hear, having problems with um, your um, connection, please re um, please ask me to, to uh, um, uh, arrange for someone to repeat what they've just said. Um, Occasionally, it may be necessary for the subcommittee to take legal advice. At my discretion, I may ask all parties to wait in this meeting while members and the relevant officers withdraw to take legal advice using a separate meeting within Microsoft Teams. Uh, we will then return to this meeting and continue. If at any time the live stream broadcast on the city's website fails, I'll ask you all to mute your microphones and cameras and to stop speaking until the live stream is restored. Uh, if, again, if we go into private session at any stage, the meeting manager will pause the live stream. Once the private part of the meeting is over, I'll ask the meeting manager to confirm that the live stream has resumed before we continue. And then at the conclusion of the hearing, I'll invite all parties to make a brief closing submission. It usually take five minutes for that. And can I stress that no decision will be taken until all evidence has been heard? Then at the decision making stage, the members and the relevant officers will withdraw from this meeting in order to determine the decision. We'll go into a separate Microsoft Teams meeting to do that. If uh, the members need to clarify any point, you'll be telephoned by the meeting manager. OK, I hope that's uh, fairly clear. So what I'd now like to do is ask Mr. David Kennedy, the licensing officer, to present his report. Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, Chair. The Chief Inspector of Weights and Measures applied on the 19th of July 2022 for a review of the premises license under Section 51 of the Licensing Act 2003 in respect of Select Express 1164 to 1166 Warwick Road, Acox Green, Birmingham, B27 6BS. The purpose of the report before the committee today is to consider the review application and the representations received and to, and to determine the matter. 
Representations have been received from West Midlands Police, Birmingham City Council Licence Enforcement and the Home Office as responsible authorities, which are attached at Appendices 1 to 3 respectively. The review application is at Appendix 4, Premises Licence is at Appendix 5 and Site Location Plans are at Appendix 6. When carrying out its licensing functions, a licensing authority must have regard to Birmingham City Council's Statement of Licensing Policy and the guidance issued by the Secretary of State under Section 182 of the Act. The licensing authority is required to take such steps as it considers appropriate for the promotion of the four licensing objectives. The options available to the committee today are to modify the conditions of licence, exclude a licensable activity from the scope of the licence, remove the designated premises supervisor, suspend the licence for a period not exceeding three months, revoke the licence or take no action. Where the authority takes a step to modify conditions or exclude a license for activity, it may provide that the modification or exclusion is to have effect for only such period, not exceeding three months as it may specify. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Um, so uh, we now move on to um, Martin Williams from Trading Standards. Would you like to make your presentation now, please? Good morning, Chair. Yes, sir. I, I will. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> in June 2022, uh, West Midlands Police Licensing Officer Chris Jones was undertaking a, a licensing inspe inspection at Select Express uh, 1164 Warwick Road, uh, Acox Green, B27 6BS. Uh, Mr Jones telephoned me as he had suspicions about uh, some of the uh, yellow tail wine on display in the shop. Uh, on this basis, we arranged to do a joint inspection <clears throat> on the 21st of June 2022, and I, I brought along with me uh, a colleague, Rabinda Manda. Uh, the staff member and the only member of staff in charge at the shop at the time was a Mr Babesh Kumar, uh, who said the premises licence holder was away in London. Uh, I did speak to this person on the telephone. However, it was a gent, and I think it was probably uh, Mr. Hurricane who is uh, participating today. Uh, I may have misunderstood whether it, I was speaking to uh, the license holder and, and it was himself rather than his wife. Mm -hmm. We may be able to uh, clear that up later. Um, we then inspected the tobacco and spirits situated behind the counter in the shop and all the wine and other alcohol products. Uh, on display in the rest of the shop. Um, I found 23 bottles of Yellow Tail 2019 Cabernet Sauvignon wine with a known counterfeit lock code and one bottle of 2016 Cabernet Sauvignon that also looks suspicious and uh, I decided to remove for further examination as well. <clears throat> the end of the inspection, uh, I told Mr Kumar that these bottles of wine may be illicit uh, and possibly counterfeit and would be removed for further examination. Uh, gave him receipt for them and uh, we then left the premises. Sometime later, I was provided with a statement from the brand holders of Yellowtail Wine confirming that all 24 bottles seized were in fact counterfeit. That's 23 of the 2019 Cabernet Sauvignon and the one of the 2016 Cabernet Sauvignon. So those are the facts. Um, just a little bit of background following those facts. Um, now, obviously, the ones we took on the day were just a snapshot of the, of the bottles that were in the shop at the time. It's difficult to assess how many cannabis products they may have supplied before that. Uh, trading standards and other agencies obviously rely upon intel and complaints from members of the public. However, if people don't complain or don't realise they've bought something that's illicit, uh, items can go unchucked for some time. Now, this can clearly damage the product's reputation as customers will often just switch brands rather than complain if they're dissatisfied. Uh, it may harm the shop's reputation as well, because uh, clearly if somebody's bought something they think was unpalatable or unpleasant, then they might just not go back to the shop. They may not go and complain. Um, the counterfeit lock codes in question are known to the producers of Yellowtail wine and have had, and they have had many samples analysed um, basically to check on the provenance of them. Now, it, 
this has been going on for a couple of years now and all the analyst results have shown that the product isn't unsafe it isn't harmful but it's of a poor poor quality wine um, much poorer quality than genuine yellowtail considerable investigation has gone on upstream of retail level to trace and halt the supply of these products by several agencies including revenue and customs food standards agency and the wine inspectorate with some success um, hopefully, so maybe no new products are coming to the UK, but I am still aware that there are some products that may still be in the hands of uh, uh, the, the suppliers to retail people. Um, investigation previously has shown that there are no fake products in the genuine supply chain, such as uh, legitimate car and ca cash and carries. Beg your pardon. They're supplied by organised criminal networks who often supply other illicit products as well, including spirits, smuggled and counterfeit tobacco products. Uh, I have to say any retailer buying these products would be aware of the source. They would realise they were coming from an illicit um, supplier. No tax or duty is paid on the products. No invoice is supplied and no traceability should there be an issue with trying to find out where they came from which clearly is something we are trying to do. Um, the previous history of the shop, if I just touch on briefly, in February 2022, Trading Standards received a complaint from a member of the public who said he'd recently purchased alcohol and tobacco, which didn't seem right from the shop. Um, following on from this, I collected an empty bottle that the complainant had bought from what he allegedly bought from the shop. Uh, and had it analysed by the brand holder at the time, Jack Daniels, um, at that stage confirmed the bottle was genuine. Uh, and from what he could see, the trace of product inside was genuine. So that may have been a false alarm. Um, other than this matter, there has been previous intelligence from January 2022 from another source, a separate one, indicating that the shop was selling counterfeit Embassy Gold cigarettes. <clears throat> Um, from my investigation, and again, I'm, this may not be correct and we may be able to be uh, advised by licensing, the com current present license holder at the time of the re review application is, uh, and I've put uh, Mr. Rajini, Rajini Harikarian. Now that may well be Mrs. And, and, and Harikarian, and maybe we can be uh, advised of that. Who was the person? However, I did. I was put on to speak to a gentleman who was said though in London when we went to the shop on the 21st of June 2022. Um, however, when I checked the public register, it was unclear who actually held the license on this date, as it indicated that the license was actually not issued until the 11th of July 2022. Um, the previous license holder was a Mr. Fanny Singham, Fanny Singham Gunnar Selene. Um, and I'm not sure, again, clarification might help, who was actually uh, responsible at the time of our visit. Uh, and that's all I want to say, really, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr Williams. I think we've, we have confirmed that uh, Mrs Harry Caddy is now the licence holder. Mr um, Her husband is here today and we confirmed that to her previously. Chair, uh, David Kennedy has his hand up, so he might be able to clarify that for you. OK, thank you very much, Mr Kennedy. Yes, Chair, yes, Chair. the uh, the licence was transferred with immediate effect and the DPS varied on the 14th of May 2022. So the current licensee was the licence holder and responsible for um, the licence at the time of the visit. OK, OK, thank you very much for that. I think that's uh, that's given us the factual back, uh, background there. OK. Um, Questions from members to Mr. Williams. Uh, Councillor Morrell, have you any questions? Um, I'm not sure whether we can answer this, but the question that's on the tip of my tongue is why was the licence transferred? Uh, might might be a question for somebody else later, but if you do know the answer to that, you might, might want to know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Councillor, I don't know the answer to that. Um, maybe licensing could clarify that a little bit further. Um, I think probably um we need to do it in order obviously but when we come to mr rajesh he'll be able to give us the background there um or mr kennedy do you want to comment on that do you have any comment to make on 
No, Chair. If, if, a, if a person buys a business, they can transfer the licence at any time. Um, uh, and as part of the application process, they can seek for that transfer to take immediate effect whilst the statutory consultation goes through. Our records indicate that, it, that that transfer was prior to the inspection by trading standards and was on the 14th of May. OK, OK, so it may have been a routine transfer. Um, OK, I'm sure Mr Rajesh can shed light on that later. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Locke, have you got any questions? No questions at this time, Chair. OK, so thank you, uh, Mr Williams, for that. And uh, so we'll now move on to Westminster's Police, Mr Swallow, uh, for your uh, presentation. Yes, thank you, Chair. West Midlands Police support the representation made by Trading Standards regarding Select Express 1164 to 1166 Warwick Road, Acox Green, license number 4074. The representation is supported under the Public Safety and Prevention of Crime and Disorder licensing objectives. The evidence submitted by Trading Standards quite clearly shows that this premises was supplying counterfeit wine, selling it to the public, passing it off as a legitimate product. In June 2022, Licensing Officer Christopher Jones visited the premises on an unconnected matter regarding CCTV footage. The matter was resolved after speaking to the premises licence holder. Whilst waiting for the premises licence holder to attend the premises, he checked some bottles of wine which were openly on sale on display shelving within the premises. He has previously made several inspections with Birmingham Trading Standards at various premises and noticed what he believed to be counterfeit bottles of wine for sale in the shop. As a result of this, he contacted Trading Standards and arranged a date to return with them to the premises as they would be able to confirm or not his suspicions being experts in that field. That visit took place on the 21st of June 2022. He returned to the shop with two Trading Standards officers who began an inspection of the premises after speaking with the shop staff and the premises licence holder or what was believed to be the premises licence holder on the telephone. The officers found a total of 24 bottles of what has now been confirmed of counterfeit wine on display for sale within the shop. There's no way that the counterfeit wine could have been purchased through the legitimate supply chain as investigations have negated that as a possibility. Traders acting unscrupulously purchasing illicit counterfeit alcohol, possibly off the back of a lorry, cannot have an idea where the alcohol has originated from, or even if it's fit for human consumption. Luckily, in this case, the wine was not harmful to, to the public, but that's more by luck than judgment on behalf of the premises. More often than not, the illegitimate purchase and sale of illicit counterfeit alcohol is made by cash transactions with no traceability, and therefore no United Kingdom duty is paid such transactions are unlikely to be shown in the company's accounts, therefore avoiding payment of taxes. This type of offence, the manufacture and distribution of counterfeit alcohol, is normally committed by organised criminal gangs selling it on the black market. The money generated by this type of crime then normally goes on to fund further criminal activity, which has a further neg negative impact on the victims and the wider community. In this case, there are several victims in the sale of counterfeit alcohol. The first is the customer who is purchasing what they believe to be a legitimate and trusted popular brand, only to find that it is of poor quality and at worst, it could be harmful to them. The brand itself is a victim. The public believe they are purchasing a leg legitimate product which then turns out to be of inferior quality and destroys customer confidence in the brand, leading to loss of sales and puts legitimate jobs at risk in uncertain times. Thirdly, other retailers, as counterfeit products are usually cheaper with no tax or duty paid, that puts legitimate retailers at a disadvantage as they cannot uh, compete on price because of the profit margins in there. 
the NHS, in the worst case scenario, if the product ha is harmful to the public, that then leads to a further call on our already strained hospitals and doctors and ambulances. And lastly, the public purse. Duty and tax isn't paid in relation to these purchases, and therefore that deprives the revenue, the exchequer, of, of, uh, of, of revenue. And that means there is less money for the, the government to use to assist the community. The only intention of a premises in purchasing and then selling counterfeit wine is to maximise profit. That's without a thought to the consequences and impact on those victims that I've just listed, with making money being the only driving factor. West Midlands Police, therefore, have no confidence in the management of these premises. The fact there is no possibility of the counterfeit wine being accidentally purchased through the legitimate supply chains means the premises knowingly and willingly purchase the wine outside of normal, recognised, legitimate outlets. The premises have put money and profit over the promotion of the licensing objectives. Thank you, Chair. You're on mute, Chair. Sorry, my mistake. Um, Councillor Locke, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Councillor Morrell? No questions, Chair, thank you. Okay, and uh, none from me. So thank you very much, Mr Solly, for that. So thank we now you. move on to licensing enforcement to Ms Lavender. So uh, would you like to speak to us now? Yes, I'm just trying to get my camera to work. <laughs> okay. Sorry, apologies, Chair. And obviously we've got the information about the um, uh, counterfeit, alleged counterfeit goods, etc. Um, so, you know, you may want to refer to that. I'll leave it to you. But um, clearly any any newer information, anything we haven't heard is uh, of particular interest. Yes, Chair, thank you very much. Um, Licensing enforcement uh, su support the review submitted by trading standards. However, we do have some other issues to raise uh, outside of the counterfeit items found by them. So uh, as part of my duties, I have access to the records held by the City Council licensing in respect to the licenses issued to the premises, Select Express 1164 Warwick Road. From these records, I can state that Regini Harry Khan is currently the license holder and the designated premises supervisor of Select Express and has been since applications to transfer the license and vary the DPS were submitted to licensing on the 14th of May 2022. Prior to that, the premises license holder and DPS was Mr. Vania Singhanasilan, sorry for my uh, pronouncing of that. Licensing enforcement received notification on the 2nd of March 2022 that immigration officers intended to visit the premises as they had received allegations that there may be people working illegally in the premises. Initially this was an invitation to accompany officers on a visit although this was later cancelled and Im immigration officers later visited the premises by themselves. On the 22nd of March 2022 immigration officer Pete Bradley emailed me to advise that they had conducted the inspection and identified two males working at the premises who were arrested as immigration overstayers and placed in detention pending removal from the UK and that the owner who gave his details as Harry Khan would be facing a fine. He added that both men had been living in terrible conditions in two tiny box rooms on the side of the storeroom and only the fire escape at the time of the visit was blocked by which was bought by crates of drinks. A statement from Officer Bradley regarding the findings was requested and is attached to Appendix 1. It's quite a lengthy statement, but it includes the photographs of the poor living conditions the men were found to be living in. Following on from that, on the 4th of May 2022, I conducted an inspection at the premises. The premises licence holder and DPS at the time of that inspection was Mr Vanessing and Gunasilan. He was not present at the, at the time and the person in charge gave his name as Anthan Athan Sutherson. A number of matters were identified that were in breach of the licence issued to them. 
Mr Southerson, who was in charge at the time, produced training records upon request, but when I asked him questions, he said his English was poor and he didn't understand. Another male was present working in the shop. He gave his name as Anadur Kubindran, and I was told he was new and no training record could be produced for him. He also said that he couldn't understand or speak English. The condition attached to the licence states the licence holder shall ensure that all staff are trained with regard to the Licensing Act 2003, in particular in respect of the sale of alcohol. A log of the training will be maintained and can be inspected by any responsible authority. In the below condition, this condition was attached by the licensing committee. All staff will receive training in the Licensing Act 2003, the licensing objectives and in relation to CSC and their role in combating this. No staff will work at the premises until this training has been completed and the required refreshments have been completed. Refresher training should take place once a year. All staff, Licensing Act 2003, Licensing Objective and CSC training will be documented and signed by both the trainer and trainee. No staff to work at the premises until this training has been completed. Training records to be made available to any of the responsible authorities on request. The staff members present did not know what CSE was and confirmed they had not received any training in that. A CCTV system is installed at the premises, however, it only had five days of recording and the date was incorrect. A condition attached to the licence by the licensing committee states CCTV that is improved by Westmoreland's police and able to capture images, particularly outside under conditions of low lighting, will be fitted in the premises. Images will be retained for a period of at least 31 days and will be made available to any of the responsible authorities to view or copies produced on request. If for any reason CCTV hard drive needs to be replaced, the previous old hard drive will be kept on site for a minimum of 31 days and made immediately available to any of the responsible authorities on request. There is also no signage regarding CCTV at the premises as required by the condition which states CCTV signage to be prominently displayed throughout the premises sales area. <coughs> A refusal as register could not be produced. Staff were not able to tell me what identification they would ac accept and they did not understand what a Challenge 25 policy was. They did point at a Challenge 25 poster but couldn't explain to me what it meant when I asked. Uh, conditions attached by the licensing committee state that a Challenge 25 policy will be operated by the premises with notices informing customers of the policy. The only forms of acceptable ID shall be photo driving licence and valid passport or a recognised form of photographic identification incorporating the PASS logo or a valid military identification and notices will be displayed in the premises stating this. No notices were displayed. An incident refusal book will be maintained at the premises and made available to any of the uh, appropriate authorities on request. During my inspection, a man attempted to purchase a single can of beer, but was informed by staff that they could not sell him a single can. The man was very upset as he stated he always purchased single cans and pointed out the amount of single cans available in the fridge. A condition attached by the licensing committee prevents single can sales. The condition reads single cans or bottles of beer, ciders and alcohol pops of less than 75 mil or plastic cups to accompany purchases of alcohol are not to be sold. <clears throat> Um, I was informed that they didn't have a list of persons uh, that cause issues, which is a condition also attached to the licence. Um, I then completed a trader's notice and issued it um, to the manager at the time, a copy of which I attached. During the inspection, I asked both members of staff where they lived and they both said at the shop. I checked the storeroom, which had been the previous area where they found people live in. Um, one of them was shown to me, which was then held in stock and used as a storeroom, but I couldn't get access into the other room. Uh, it was, it seemed to be that the handle was missing from the door and they were unable to open it so that I could see inside, so I didn't gain access to that room. And both uh, men present at that time told me that they live in a flat above the address. Uh, the matters identified cause concerns, along with the other issues that have been raised by the other author other licensing, other responsible authorities, mean that licensing have no confidence in the license holder to uphold any of the licensing objectives. Uh, and we seek to ask the committee to revoke the license. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Ms Lavender, for that. I'll just go to members for questions. Um, Councillor Morrell? No questions, Chair. Thank you, Sarah. Councillor Locke? No questions, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't think any questions for me. Uh, can I just say, uh, we are not, of course, an immigration body. Um, so we treat that information as background. Um, but thank you very much for that, um, painting the full picture. Um, okay, so now I'd like to move on to the representative of the license holder, Mr. Rajesh, uh, to speak on behalf of the license holder, Mr. Mr. Rajesh. Thank you, Chair. Um, before I go into the details, you probably you may be clear about the, the status of the licensee and the uh, DPS, but let me rephrase that. Um, under the current license, um, Mrs. Rajini Hariharan is a license holder. Um, the, Mr. Hariharan presence today is the husband of um, uh, Mrs. Rajini Hariharan. Mr. Hariharan is the uh, person who in charge for the day-to-day -day running of the business um, and uh, the management of the business, so he's, he's a manager. So the both of them took over the business on um, 14th of May um, 2020. Um, I noticed the statement from uh, 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 Miss Lavender. The inspection took place and all the breaches were found before my client took over the business that was under the previous licensing. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I go into the, my statement, um, before I go into any details, I would like to make this clear to everyone. We are not here to give you any excuse or challenge anything on this review application regarding what happened on 21st of uh, June 2020. Rather, my client is accepting his mistake and um, he is taking the full responsibility for this. We are only here to clarify few things to the committee and the responsible authorities and also um, to explain the circumstances around this issue. Um, Chair, compared to most of the other convenience stores in the borough, this is the big business and my client invested a lot into this business. This is a family business run by Mr and Mrs Harry Heron and um, this is his livelihood. Both Mr. and Mrs. Harrigan went to Sri Lanka in late June for a family emergency. Mr. Harrigan um, um, is, is here today. He's the one who manages the day-to-day -day business. He only came back from Sri Lanka last night. He's um, here in this meeting. My client took over the business and the premises license on the 15th of um, uh, uh, May 2020. We made the application to transfer the license and vary the DPS with immediate effect on the 14th of May 2020, and the application was approved by the licensing team. He's not responsible for this premises license or those conditions before this date. I kindly request to um, um, uh, the appendix to by the licensing enforcement team that the, the inspection referred by Ms. Um, Sarah Lavender, it was stated um, uh, is Yes, 2022, that's right. It's um, um, It was dated 4th of May, 2022. Uh, it clearly states the name of the licensee at the time. That is not my client. My client wasn't the licensee, nor the DPS, and he wasn't responsible for any of those findings during that inspection. Since the license was changed to my client in May, um, there was another license inspection carried out by the council at the end of the inspections officers were satisfied and also they have met my client at the premises. Unfortunately, my client cannot recall the exact date of this inspection and he wasn't 100% sure it's a licensing enforcement or the trading standards. The officers here might be able to clarify that. Um, I request the detail to the licensing team in July and I haven't heard anything yet. So that that's was a, um, a satisfied inspection after he took over the business. Um, if I, if, could I ask please to go to the, the page four of the review application. Again, I'm repeating what the statement says. So in June 2022, Westminster Police Licensing Officer 
uh, because John was undertaking a licensing inspection at this premises. So during the inspection, the officer noticed some suspicious wine bottles and arranged a further inf uh, inspection with the trading standard. Um, before we go to the inspection on 21st of June, I just want to focus on this inspection, uh, which initially was carried out by uh, police officer Mr. Jones in June. Uh, I don't know the full detail of this inspection. However, since there are no complaints about this inspection, I can only assume that the inspection went well. I want you to please make a note of that, Chair. The inspection carried out on 21st of June with police and trading standard. The trading standard found 24 counterfeit wine bottles. My client takes the full respons responsibility for this, and this is his mistake. Chair, we are not here to give you an excuse for this. However, I have to clarify how this happened. This business was bought by my client with the, the stock. He took the whole stock with the premises. He paid for it. And those um, uh, 24 bottles were came along with that stock. Please note that this happened a month prior to this inspection in 21st of June. So he never purchased this as alcohol from any outside source. Also, uh, uh, please note that this is relatively a big business. Two door numbers, the double frontier shop. We have wide range of alcohol and tobacco products. So during this inspection on 21st of June, trading started went through the, the whole alcohol shelf and all the tobacco products, but there were only two, 24 bottles of same brand of counterfeit alcohol in the whole shop. And according to the trading standard, it's no harmful product, but poor quality. Again, it's, it's, it's a serious matter. Counterfeit is a counterfeit, regardless of numbers or the type. My client is fully aware of this impact caused by this illicit product, and he never purchased anything from any illegal source. So th this this happened due to his oversight. He failed to check the stock he received with the shop, but he didn't buy this from any any organized criminal network or any other outside source. If if, if this is the case, chair, you would have found lots of different types of other illicit products in this shop, not just this 24 bottle sitting in a corner. If I could also um, uh, take you to the page five of the uh, review application. Um, it, the state, the top of the page five says it's, um, it's difficult to assess how much counterfeit products this shop have, um, um, may have supplied before this. Honestly, yeah, I think it's not a responsible way to paint a picture of my, uh, about my client. He took over the business, um, uh, took over this premises a month before this inspection. And um, he's not responsible for and he's not aware of anything happened uh, uh, before that. And also, while I'm here um, on the same page, um, uh, the page five of the review application, if you um, see the previous history of the shop. Um, there are a number of allegations about um, trading stand officers mentioned earlier about the Jack Daniel whiskey, embassy gold cigarette, even though um, this is nothing to do with my client. Uh, this took place before he involved in this. I would like to bring it to your attention that this premises is surrounded by competitors and it's common that competitors makes false allegation because you can see that these were unfound allegations, so nothing were found. Um, even though it's, it's, it's nothing to do with my client, it shows the, the nature of the environment with all the competitors. Finally, Chair, my, um, my client s seriously feels that he's getting the blame for everything happened in the past. He has done a mistake and he's taking the responsibility for that. In addition to that, he already um, um, uh, introduced some some measures, some practice in the premises. Uh, he's keeping all the receipts and all the invoices and is um, and maintaining a list of suppliers in the premises. It can be inspected at any time and, and also he's happy to um, take this as an additional condition on the premises license. So is everything is recorded on the premises. I believe even the previous inspections, he submitted all those uh, invoices to the trading standard offices, but not for that 24 bottles. Um, so 
if you are still not happy and have some doubts about this management, my client is happy to cease the alcohol sales voluntarily until a satisfactory inspection is completed by the council in the near future. I know this is going to affect his business. However, he would like to give you an assurance that all the conditions, all the measures are in place. Um, things like this will never happen. Chair, this is his livelihood. His family depends on this business. He just recently bought this business for a big sum of money. It's a big shop. You can see that it's a big investment. In this current climate, when the energy bills are going through the roof, if anything serious happened to his premises business, it will destroy the business, his livelihood, everyone working there. Since he has taken all the steps to give an assurance to the authorities, he's happy to take those as his license conditions. He can wait until a satisfactory inspection um, can be carried out by the enforcement service. He's kindly asking you to give him a second chance to put things right. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Rajesh, for that. Uh, you get the chance to sum up later uh, along with the other parties. Um, so we now go to questions to members. I, let me ask you a question to start off. Um, what connection, if any, does the current license holder and the manager have with the previous licensee, Mr. Gunnar Seeler? Thank you for the question, Chair. I asked this um, in several different ways, and once I saw the report uh, with my client, the only connection he had, um, because his name was bouncing around here and there, the this is a big premises, Chair. As I mentioned, I think he paid nearly 150 grand to get the uh, the premises. Um, when they purchase the premises, they're normally given kind of a day-to-day -day turnover. But most of the time, uh, the purchasers don't take it as a face value. They normally involve in the business, see how the business is running. They do that. So that was the only relationship he had with the previous management. Um, he he was in the premises on few occasions, to see, but he hasn't got no responsibility of the business or the premises. He is there to see how the turnover, how the business is running. Uh, in some occasions, did he, sorry. Yeah. Did he know Mr. Gunnar Seelan then when Mr. Gunnar Seelan was running the business? Not until he um, started to put an offer for this business. Not before. And how did, the, how did his knowledge that the business was for sale come about? Uh, that's something I don't know. I need to ask my client. How did he find out? Uh, Mr. Harry, if you could answer how you find out the sale of this business, please. Yes, he's free to answer that if he's, yeah. Can. Okay. What did you ask? Uh, uh, Mr. Harrihan, it's really, w did you know Mr. Gunnar Seeland before the sale of the business to you, to your wife and you? Yeah, he's uh, from uh, Sri Lanka. What's your relationship with him then, uh, if any, before uh, the business sale? He's one of my friend, one of my friend's friend. So I, my friend introduced him to by this uh, business. So you knew you knew him before the business transfer yeah. before before you bought yeah. the business. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll just go to other colleagues see if they've got. It questions. Uh, Councillor Locke? No, actually you asked the question I was going to ask. Okay. Councillor Morrell? No questions, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I think that's our questions, Mr. Rajesh. Um, so now, um, do you, is there any submission you want, other submission you want to make on behalf of the licence holder at this stage? Um, sorry, are you asking the final submission at this stage, or no? You got you 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 get you get an opportunity to do that um, uh, at the end, right at the end, five minutes. But I'm just giving you another chance to say something if you've anything additional you want to add at this stage. Yeah, I just I just want to um, clarify the the question you asked uh, myself and my client. It's a um, yes, he he knew the um, uh, the previous management when he started trying to buy the shop, not prior to that. He was introduced by the by his friend because he was friend of the friend. So before he buy the shop, 
he got, um, um, you know, before he purchased the shop um, or approached to buy the shop, he has no connection to the previous licensee. Um, that's that's what he was trying to say. Okay. Is that what you want to say then at this stage? Um, yes, yeah. Yeah. OK, OK. Thank you very much for that. OK, so we dealt with our questions. Um, so we now move on to um, uh, closing submissions and uh, I return to Ms Lavender uh, from Trading uh, Enforcement. Ms Lavender, do you want to make a closing submission? Yeah, I can just clarify. I don't think the inspection that he was talking about was carried out by licensing enforcement. Um, I do have concerns that there is a connection between the, uh, I, I believe that Mr. Khan, Hamid Khan has been involved in the premises for as, for as long as I have had dealings with it. I believe that his name has come up a few times and I, I suspect that it was his name that was talked about in regard to the immigration matters as the owner of the premises at that time. Um, so my concerns are that there is that there is a connection between uh, the current license holder uh, and the previous license holder and that the involvement has been going on for longer than suggested and that, it, that obviously that raises concerns in regard to upholding the licensing objectives. I do believe that immigration made a separate representation although not here today regarding the issues raised previously. That's it really, thank you. Okay, thank you for that. So now Mr Mark Swallow from West Midlands Police, do you want to make a closing submission? Yes, thank you, Chair. Firstly, uh, to try and uh, put some sort of clarification around an issue that was just brought up. It was mentioned that it was an inspection that Mr Jones carried out that brought this to light. As I said in my evidence in chief, it wasn't an inspection. He was collecting CCTV for an investigation team and noticed what he believed were potentially um, the bottles of, uh, of fraudulent wine. It's been said that this was purchased as part of, uh, of the stock of the, of the original sale of the shop. That doesn't matter. It is up to the premises license holder to ensure the veracity of all stock that they purchase from whatever source. That clearly has not been done on this uh, on this occasion. There also appears to be some confusion around who's in charge of these premises, who's responsible. I noted that on numerous occasions that the um, Council for the uh, premises license holder kept referring to the person in charge as he, as if it were Mr. Harry Callan. Clearly, this is Mrs. Harry Callan who's in charge of this premises. She's the person who is responsible, yet it would seem there is a blurring of the lines as to who's actually in charge of this business, which causes great concern. Obviously, purchasing products outside of the legitimate supply chain, that puts profit above the licensing objectives, and that cannot be acceptable. The license holder themselves has not addressed the committee. You're being asked to put your trust in them to give them a second chance, because they've already signed up previously to uphold the licensing objectives, and this clearly hasn't been done. They're asking you to take a leap of blind faith in supporting them because you haven't heard them. You haven't had a chance to examine them, cross-examine them as to their good faith in doing this. The premises license holder has shown no concern for the public in that they were selling a product that they didn't know whether that was dangerous. That could have had serious harm consequences for the persons who had bought that. I do know that it was mentioned about the 24 bottles. 24 bottles were recovered, but it's not known how many bottles had previously been sold. It could have been many more. I would also notice that a lot of blame has been attached to the previous management. 
But when the previous management has been examined, there was no counterfeit products with, the, with them. It's only counterfeit products now. So that may suggest that previously there wasn't an issue with counterfeit wine. There's only an issue with counterfeit wine now. I would say to you, councillors, that there is a lot of confusion here about who's in charge, who knows who, who's involved in this um, in, in this enterprise that is Select Express. And what we do know is that they were advertising for sale, counterfeit wine, that cannot be acceptable. And I don't believe that you could put any conditions that would prevent that in place. Therefore, I would ask you to revoke the licence and remove the DPS. Thank you, councillors. Thank you very much, Mr Swallow. So uh, finally, uh, before I come back to Mr Rajesh for um, the licence holder, uh, Mr Williams. Um, thank you, Chair. Yeah, uh, a little bit confused uh, like Mr Swallow. Um, why is Mr Harry Carrier not the licence holder and the DPS? We've got to ask ourselves that. We may not get a straight answer if he seems to be taking all responsibility for the business. Why have we not got the premise license holder and DPS who is responsible, taking any responsibility at all in this meeting? That's strange. We've heard that they bought, they transferred the license on the 14th of May. We haven't heard when they bought the business. They could have bought that any time before that and they possibly did, in which case they may well have been involved in the previous incident with the uh, Home Office. Um, also, it appears, I was confused because it appears that Mr Harry Carrion was responsible or was involved during that period with the Home Office issues. That makes me more concerned than I was before, to be honest, Chair. <clears throat> That's all I want to add. I've got more questions now than answers, but those are the questions that, that, that concern me um, and I think probably would need to concern uh, you as a committee as well. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, can I just say we don't necessarily attach negativity to non-attendance by a license holder. They don't have to attend these hearings, but we've heard everything ever be said. So I now move on to Mr. Rajesh uh, to sum up for the license holder. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I clarify um, um, this regarding the, the confusion around licensee and the DPA, sorry, licensee and the manager, it's Mr. and Mrs. Harrier. Um, I think the one of the issue is um, I made the transfer and the DPS application uh, back in May. Um, the one of the things I noticed, the, the application form doesn't ask for a title. Um, it's just a full name. Um, it, it happens in the past with the I know it's not just Birmingham City Council, it's, I think it's across the board, it's online application forms. The form doesn't have a title on it. Uh, uh, it creates some confusions in some, other, my, 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 some of my other applications too. So um, we do send along the photographic ID uh, with an application. Um, sometimes get picked up and sometimes it's done. And um, we should have correct this when we receive the license document back from the licensing authority. Um, when I look back, at, I mean, I only noticed once this came back, the review application came to light, it says <coughs> Mr. Rajini Harry Heron, instead of Mrs. Rajini Harry Heron, that is, is a typo. We apologize for that. Um, that's what causes this. But um, um, regarding uh, um, uh, the um, uh, Mrs. Harrion is not here. Um, it's because, as I earlier mentioned in my previous statement, both Mr. and Mrs. Harrion went to Sri Lanka for a family emergency. So um, uh, it's, it's one of the uh, serious matter. Mrs. Harrion is still dealing um, uh, at, at the moment. So that is why her husband is present. And moreover, he is involved in the day to day business. Um, she is looking after the license conditions and, you know, paperwork and complying with all of them. He's dealing with the cash and carries and managing the staff and everything. So he knew more about the operational matters than Mrs. Um, Harry Heron. So that's that's how um, the, this couple is running the business. Um, 
if I go back to um, uh, uh, Mr. Mark Solo, I totally agree with him. He's right. He bought the shop with the stock and therefore he is responsible for it. He accept that. Um, uh, we are not asking for any excuse. We just explaining the situation. When, when, you, when you take the stock for a shop, massive shop, the stock take report doesn't normally, it's not against yeah, it's not an excuse. The stock take report doesn't normally specify items individual with the names. So it will say the wine this much worth, the spirit this much worth, something like that. So yes, it is an oversight. Um, but what we are trying to say to you is he didn't actually go out and purchase this knowingly a counterfeit. It just came, came along with all other stuff. Um, that is that is how these mistakes happen, and um, and also it just one month after um, he took the responsibility, so um, he didn't even had a chance to you know correct check go through everything fully. Um, it again it's it's we are not asking the um, excuse for this, but we are kindly requesting the the scenario. Um, please note that uh, uh, that. The premises license, um, the, the inspection carried out, we are not 100% sure whether it's a trading standard officer, so please, but there was an inspection carried out in um, in uh, late June or early July, and just nothing was raised at the time. Um, and again, the, the 24 bottles were found, that's among the whole shop. It's not, um, I mean, there's not many counterfeit stocks in the premises. Um, if he's such a person who's re re regularly sells counterfeit products, authorities would have not um, identified a lot more illicit products in the premises, not just 24 bottles of the same brand. Uh, we have numerous lines of tobacco and alcohol products in the premises. Um, this, this, they at the moment, as I previously mentioned, Chair, yeah, he's maintaining a list of suppliers and all the invoices at the premises for inspection at any time is happy to take this as a, as a license conditions going forward. This is a, a small family business already started worrying about upcoming energy bills and other consequences along with that. He's recently invested a lot of money into this business. If he lose his premises license today, it will close the business down. It was not only devastating to my client, but also his employees who will lose their jobs and their livelihood too. So for this, for all these reasons, yeah, um, my client is sincerely asking you to give him a, a chance, a second chance on this matter. Thank you. Okay, so that is your closing submission, Mr. Rajesh. That, thank you very much for your assistance to the committee today. Uh, and can I thank everybody else who has contributed? Um, the members and the committee lawyer and the committee manager will now go into private session while the subcommittee makes its decision. Um, we will rejoin this meeting when we will announce a substantive decision of the subcommittee with the full written reasons for the decision being sent out within five working days. Can I just check that process with the committee lawyer? Um, Ms Swampalai? Yes, Chair, that's right. Um, the okay. uh, the full written decision will be with them in within five days, but it's generally faster than that. But we are to make a decision uh, which we will relay to those assembled today. Yes, yes. Yes. OK, so if you if people could hold on uh, in this meeting. Uh, Sorry, Chair. I, th I think the question is, is are, are you rejoining to announce the decision or are the members or all parties going to get it in writing? If Joanne could confirm that. Um, as you wish, Chair, Wh whichever you prefer. Uh, well, we don't normally give the decision on the day, do we? No, not normally. So I think, so I think the what's written here, I'm following a sort of script here, what's written here is incorrect. What we'll do is uh, we will uh, give the written decision um, uh, within five working days to the parties. So we'll close the proceedings today, uh, as I'm advised, that is uh, what we can do. Uh, and we'll get back to you in five working days. Other than if there's anything we need to clarify uh, with any of the parties, uh, the committee manager will ring the parties concerned. So this hearing is closed today. 
uh, and uh, we will send you the decision within five working days. Thank you, everybody, for your contributions today. Colleagues, a uh, five-minute break. Uh, we'll meet in our private session in five minutes' time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillors.